we don't want to have biological children or get married. Emily is the strict parent and Josh is more laid back. Emily has always paid for Josh. Josh has no money. I would say no. What? <laughs> And welcome back to our channel. Today's video is a reacting or answering your assumptions about us. So on Instagram, I ask people to send in their assumptions and to give us their worst. And my gosh, you guys were brutal. But we've chosen 25 of them because there were so many that came in. Chosen 25 of them. Some of them came in, like, were very similar and came in over and over again. But we chose 25 that we're going to answer slash react to now. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number one was that Emily never lets Josh talk. Okay, she lets me talk, but the problem is um slow and have to think go through or think what I'm going to talk because I don't know much English. Yeah, so I end up well you do, you know a lot of English. But I can ask him a question and he stays silent for like five minutes before he answers. So I get impatient and I just feel the silence and I talk a lot more. Um, but I do want him to talk, so it's not about me not letting you talk. Or it's like now, I'm not, not not letting you, it's just I've got a lot to say, you know? But I want him to have a lot to say too. I want him to just interrupt me and say what he's got to say. I'll start one day. But he's getting better on videos, isn't he? If you think he's getting better, this Josh is getting better, give him a big thumbs up. <laughs> okay, number two. This was a horrible one and came in a few nasty ways, but I've picked the one that didn't come in so nastily, which was, you see other people when you are apart. Completely, no? And it's weird because some people always think, just as you maybe because I'm black, I'll do something bad when Emily is not there, or, yeah. Yeah, Um. well, I think we can only both speak for ourselves and we've chosen to trust each other in this long distance relationship. Um, so, yeah, I am a very loyal person. I wouldn't even dream of it. So, yeah, and we've chosen to trust each other. So, yeah. So the answer is no, we don't. Okay, number three. Josh does not want to leave Uganda because of his family. I would say no because I also want to take my kids and my family together. We would like me and Emily and the kids to be together. And with my mom and dad, they are old enough to look after themselves. As so long as someone is there, maybe take them to the hospital or anything. Or if the man is there, take them to the hospital. So that's not the case. I think it's hard as well because obviously Josh would miss his family if he was in like the UK or another country but just as I miss mine when I'm here and I spent almost five years here so it would make sense for Josh to also spend some time in my country as well and away from his because it's all about compromise really and obviously everyone misses their families if you're not in the country with them but also like Josh can probably best support actually his family and his parents from the UK because yeah, they're getting old and they can't work and things like that. So yeah. Yeah. So the answer is no. The answer no. is no. You don't want not want to leave. Obviously, you'd miss them if you did leave. Okay, number four. Josh is patient and Emily gets irritated easily. No. Yes. <laughs> you're not patient. I am. No, you're not. Very patient. No. Very patient no. with everything. You. How are you? How, how are you with like other drivers when they do something wrong? <laughs> I pass them. No. I don't. No. You You'll like this. stop the car and get out. What do you do when the other drivers? I moan. Are... Yeah, I moan because they like you know they swerve and get in my way, but I don't. I don't know. I don't. I. I don't think I get irritated easily. It depends how stressed I am at the time. Okay, and um, this is, I guess, a little bit similar, is Emily is the strict parent and Josh is more laid back. No, I'm the strict parent. Mm. I am. Yeah. I feel like he is definitely stricter in like what he expects from the kids and things and I'm a bit more, I don't know if loving is the right word, but maybe. Um, but that I end up like 
telling the children off a lot more simply because they don't listen to me as much and he just has to be there and his presence means they listen. So he doesn't have to actively tell them what to do all the time and tell them off because they automatically listen really well for Josh and less so for me. But no, I think he's definitely stricter than I am. Like, a little bit too strict sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> They're only babies, got to be lovely, like, got to be kind to them. Okay, number six. Emily wears the pants. Hmm? Emily wears the pants, Emily wears the trousers, Emily's in charge. <laughs> Emily's in charge. <laughs> you know what, I just think that most women in the family do, maybe actually not in the culture here, but I feel like in my culture, a lot of women, you know, generally, Oh. Yeah. So yeah. Obviously yes. you're equal really, but the men just, you know, the women make the decisions more because the men a bit more easy going and will just go along with it, you know. But I actually do ask you pretty much everything. I, I don't make a decision by myself. I have an idea, I run it by you. Always. You want to confirm, yes. Yeah, I mean, will. I want you to say yes to what I've come up with. <laughs> right. Number seven, Emily is the most organised. I would say no. What? I'm the most no, organised. No, absolutely not. I was even speaking to him, like, was it yesterday? Saying to him, it absolutely drives me mad that we, we've got so much to do and he never writes it down in a list that he can, like, strategically go through or he never plans out his days. And oh my God, I have lists everywhere. Yeah, maybe too many lists. but. I have to get down what's in my head into an organised like fashion in order to actually achieve things to get it ticked off. Josh, he's never written a list in his life. Because I have a, and a, then it a, means that a, you don't prioritise stuff and you don't no. No 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 no. You are not organised. You are so disorganised. And it's the one thing I'm saying to him I think will completely change our life if he starts planning his days out, which I know in Uganda they don't always go to plan. But some sort of plan. Plan A, plan B, plan C. I just wake up to what the day brings. But then things don't move enough. Because when you plan things, you end up very stressed and very hard, not fulfilling a lot. But you forget things if you don't have it written down. And for me, the satisfaction of ticking something off my to-do list. Anyway. Yes, I am the most organised. Okay, number eight. Josh would prefer an adventurous date and Emily a chilled one. Complete opposite. <laughs> Even when we went to Sippy, Josh was like, why are we doing this and why are we not on the beach? Um, <laughs> I just love adventure, adventure stuff. Like, I've done the kayaking on the white water here, I've done the white water rafting, um, and it was never thrilling enough. Like, nothing is ever scary enough. And this one, I'm trying to persuade him to be brave enough to go like calm water tubing because he's scared. So we're going to be doing that before I leave. Hope so. This one would much rather just sit in the, the shade on the beach with some beer. But that you also do like doing like activities, I think. You're just not so used to it. Okay. Number nine is Emily's family were not pleased with this relationship. That's not no, that's not true. I think it's, I think it's. I've, both my parents had kind of differing opinions. My mum possibly not massively pleased in the first place, to be honest. But mum's quite is cynical, the right word, I think so. Skeptical, cynical, and of, of men generally, and yeah, and. My dad, I think, was quite supportive because he then had someone looking after his daughter when um, she was out here. Me talking about me as if I'm not me. <laughs> he had someone looking after. Yeah, someone was looking after me. And honestly, I don't think I would have survived those almost five years here, like as a single mum out here. It would have been really, really hard. So yeah, and yeah, I think they had differing opinions in the beginning. What did your parents think? Hmm? What did your parents think of our relationship? They're yeah, supportive. They said, yeah, go. 
I, I really love Josh's parents, but I can't communicate with them still. <laughs> okay, oh, and that brings us to number 10. So we have trouble communicating or don't see eye to eye. Hmm? We have trouble communicating. We don't like to agree on things. Oh. Yes. We have trouble. Mm. And James. So you elaborate, I've already got my thoughts. What, tell me more. And then you also say, if it's my idea, I have, it's quick and I agree. When mm. you have your idea, yeah. I always say no. Yeah, well, he's a very proud, stubborn man. So if I come up with something that needs to be done, he's so slow. This isn't communicating, though. This is something else. But he is so slow at actually getting it done. His idea, seconds. But in terms of communicating and trouble communicating, I think in person, no, we're fine. And actually, we can agree on things a lot and we discuss things. But I do think we struggle when I'm in the UK and he's here and communicating, you know, via messages and things. That's a problem. It has been a problem, hasn't it? Um, which actually brings us to number 11, which is we struggled to, have we struggled to maintain a long distance relationship? We thought about ending it. So it has been hard. I like don't want to sugarcoat it and pretend that it's easy. It has not been easy. And we go through different periods where it's better when it's not yeah and i think communication is the problem and this one is not always that great at communicating via messages i feel like it always has to be me to initiate things and it gets frustrating yeah so i think i want to be real with people it's not been easy yeah mm -hmm. what do you have to say have we thought about ending it you thought about <laughs> You thought about I it. haven't necessarily thought about it. I have felt at times like I just can't keep keep doing it. I mean, we didn't see each other for a year and three months. And I think it was going somehow all right until about Christmas, so like the last three months. And I've just been honestly so fed up. And everyone in my life has said, once you get back to Uganda and see Josh again, it'll all be fine. Yeah, you just need to see him. And I've been like, I don't think so. I just don't think it's going to. I don't think so. And then it's, it's been fine, hasn't it? <laughs> So everyone was we are like, we have never been apart. Yeah, so it is just really hard. A year and three months is a very long time to not see someone. So yeah, trouble communicating when we're apart. And yeah, have we thought about ending it? I'd say that yes, I have. Um, but thought about it is not necessarily like the same thing as like actually considering going through with it. Um, number 12 is that we are only together for the children. We are together for the children, but also we are together for the love. Mm, for us. For us. I do think going back to being in a long distance relationship and struggling, it's the fact that we've got the children that have meant that we didn't just, you know, throw the, what's it called? What's the phrase? Throw in the, throw in the sack? I can't remember what it's called. But it's meant that we just couldn't just give up easily. So it has helped make sure that we survive this whole long distance thing. But it's not the reason that we're together. You know, we were together for years before George and Tally joined our family, and then James did. Um, yeah. So obviously the children give us reason to stay together, but it's not the only reason we are together. Right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Emily has always paid for Josh. Josh has no money. <laughs> I'll say she pays, yes, but I'm a very hard-working man. She's earning the money, but I'm running everything else. Yeah. And I always want to work yes, a lot. Yes. So but just because we have a lot going around, we have kids and more organization, so I have to be helping with everything. If I leave her to work, for me to go and work, then nothing will move. Nothing will move. Yeah. So. Josh was working when I first met him, but because we started this organisation and there's just so much to be done all the time, it just made sense for him to be doing that because and he wants to work way more than I want to work and I'm hoping one day he'll be the one earning the money because I'd much rather be the one with the kids. Um, but obviously, especially now I'm in the UK, there's more opportunities for me to earn more money. Um, but Josh is constantly wanting to start up businesses and things. So it's not that he doesn't want to and he wants to live off me. It's just that he essentially does a full-time job with the charity and all this for no money. That's the difference. But instead, 
I'm paying, he's doing it voluntarily instead of me paying someone else to do it. So he's still doing a job, he's just not paid for it. Yeah. And we, I couldn't do it without him, like, it's so much work, isn't it? Okay. On that one, Josh is with me for money. Josh, you're with me for the money. Let me leave it to her. <laughs> this girl, yeah, I just love her. She doesn't have any money. Uh, not really. Obviously, we have enough to just about get by, but it is a struggle. And even with me in the UK, sending money out it is such a struggle. We barely make ends meet, let alone saving money up for things. Um, this trip, in reality, I could not afford to take it, but yeah, we've done so anyway. Um, yeah, I don't think he is. No, he could have a much easier life if he wasn't with me. <laughs> okay. Josh does not want to adopt all the kids. I want to adopt all the kids, all our kids, and we live together just that the process is moving very slow and some other problems. Like Emily was here for years to adopt just Adam. Yes. So the process is moving but it's very slow. I mean, I wish we didn't have to go through the adoption process, it's not fun. Um, but yeah, I mean I want to. I think you do too. I think even if we didn't stay together, Josh would still be with the kids. So yeah, the answer to that is no. Um, Josh is in this relationship for the UK visa. No, no, no way. Because if there was an opportunity, we could live here uh, in a good life. Have life, good money. I would rather stay here and then we also here with Adam, everything. So you've not been to the UK to actually no. make a decision between I don't know if I like even He's UK. Not, yeah. I've never been to UK, so I don't know what is if I like UK or I like Uganda. He's very patriotic, if that's the word he likes. He likes Uganda. Um, I just want to give our family a life there for the same sort of amount of years as we did here. Um, and then we see. Um, it's not necessarily that we'll be in the UK forever. We'll make a decision. But also, once Josh and the kids live there for, I think, five or six years, then they'll have British citizenship and we'll be a bit more free to make a decision. So we want to go and achieve that and then we'll be a bit more free. So we decide. Yeah. Okay. We don't want to have biological children or get married. For the kids, we are still organizing ourselves because we have all these other kids to adopt but do you want biological children yes we want yeah do you want i'm God, i feel like maybe i'm 30 now and i don't know whether there's some sort of like hormonal thing that changes in women but like the almost the craving to be pregnant like one of my best friends told me she was pregnant and i think i cried for like five hours i rang josh i'm so happy for her but i was so insanely like jealous like in every single fiber of my being was like i've been craving to have a baby like I, I want a biological baby not that i think i'll love that child any more than these that is not the case at all it's not even the the end result baby that i'm desperate for it's just that experience of being pregnant i think and i'm just like craving that yes so I don't know. Will we be finished with the video? We'll come. In a minute, Adam, okay? Good boy. I want his mom to talk to me. But are you in the room? Close the door, darling. Close the door. What about um, getting married? We don't want to get married. We get. We want to get married, but there is a process we are waiting. It's, yeah, so we do. Um, I, to be honest, it's like, wouldn't it be one of my top priorities at all? You know, when we've already got the family now, we're never going to have a huge wedding because I could never justify spending that sort of money. So I don't, you know, it doesn't, getting married doesn't necessarily mean that much, but obviously for us to be together um, in the UK, it's a very important thing that we need to get done. So we will. And it's not that I don't want to, I do want to, but 
you know, we're already a family. Getting married doesn't really say anything. Um, but we will, but we're not going to do that until Josh has finished the adoption process for the other kids because then it would make it an international adoption and much more costly and take even longer. So we will be once the adoption has gone through. Yeah? Okay, we want a big family. We are a big family already. <laughs> you know, I, we, I feel like I change my mind every other day. Like, one day I'm like, we have too many kids, I can't do this. And the next day I'm like, I want more. So, yeah, we are a big family. And I think I'd like to have, add biologically one or two. If I can biologically have children, obviously we've not tried. Um, yeah. I, but that would take us to six and that's a lot of kids. So, I don't think we'll have any more than that. That already is a big family. Okay, 19. We never argue. We argue. We argue. Everyone, does, Everyone I think most people argue. argue. They're lying if they don't. But I, we actually haven't argued too much since I've been here. Again, back to like in long distance over the phone, I'd say yes, we do more, but it's just hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, more arguments, yeah, and more coming from like the frustrations of things, like the frustrations of being apart for so long and things not moving fast enough. Me then maybe unfairly taking it out on Josh, Josh not showing me enough love over the phone. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we do argue, but I don't think we've actually argued much in person, have we, since I've been back? A couple of disagreements here and there, but we all got, we sort them out. Okay, Josh loves me more than I love him. Absolutely not. I always think it's the other way around. I love him more than he no, loves me. No, no. Well, I show it more than he does. But I love And him. I say it more than you do. But I practically do it more than you do. How? Like now. Looking at, <laughs> Looking at me doesn't more, mean you love me. More than you. <laughs> okay. Sometimes we think that our plans won't work out. Mm, yeah. Do you? Um, what do you I, think? You think sometimes you think. No, I don't think that's true. I mean, I have kind of decided not to put any form of timeline on anything anymore because I learnt that as adoption that. I'd just be disappointed constantly. So it's not that I don't think they'll work out, I just don't know when they will work out. Um, but I try, as I said, don't put time on it so I don't get disappointed. But I am absolutely certain we will be a family all together um, because we will make sure of it, we will fight for it, no matter how long it takes or what we have to do for it. So I do think they will work out, it's just when. What do you think? And exactly don't know what you Yeah. Emily just wanted to adopt a black child like an accessory like many other volunteers. What do you think? Do you think that's what I wanted? No, you moved here with no intention of adoption. Mm. When I came to volunteer, which I have said very openly, I don't really agree with anymore, but I did it anyway and I held a five day old baby in my arms and was asked to look after him. It, in that moment, didn't matter if he was black, white, blue, green, whatever. You automatically, when you're looking after a baby one to one, I'm, I, well, I'm pretty sure that most people would get very attached, um, especially when you're a very emotional person like me. Um, so I am very aware that in life, colour differences and Adam's life will be very different to mine but when I first came out and I was looking after him it didn't matter what colour he was I fell in love with him as a baby and by like sort of you know I was acting as his mother um, and I hadn't planned to adopt but I fell in love with him so I moved here to adopt him so no no accessory you know even this sort of adoption is quite rare in the UK it's, I know in the States it's very common it's quite rare to be honest in the UK. Have you met any other British people adopting here? Mm -hmm. So no is the answer to that, but yeah, I get what it looks like from the outside in, but no one knows our relationship other than us, and yeah, Adam changed my life, was the love of my life, 
Um, okay, 23. Adam is no longer around people that look like him in the UK. Now, the answer to this is yes, he is not, and that is not ideal at all and not my preference. Um, I know it's not good for him and he should have people that look like him around him, but our situation right now is just temporary. We're doing what we can with what we've got um, to get Josh and the others to the UK. I had to go with Adam by ourselves um, and I've had to move in with my parents. So that's in the area they are in, which isn't very diverse. It is getting better though, it is. I'm seeing a lot more like black people around um, which weren't there when I was growing up. So it is getting more diverse, um, but not as much as I would like it to be. But we are just waiting for Josh and the kids to join us and then we'll see where we're going to live and what we're going to do. So not ideal, but we're doing what we can with the opportunities we've got at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, second to last one. Sorry, these are mostly for me now. I only wanted Adam, now that I've got Adam, I don't care about the other kids. What do you think, is that my? No, she still loves the other kids as she loves Adam. Exactly, I love them so much. Pretty much my life revolves around them because even though I'm with Adam all day, every day, all the work I do is, you know, I, send, I send almost all my money I earn out to look after these kids. I'm constantly trying to sort out them going to extracurricular things, going to school, send out boxes for things for them. I'm just, I love them all. I love, I love them all equally. I love different things about each of them and love them in different ways, which I don't think people talk about enough, but I do think you have a different relationship with each of your children. Um, but I don't love one more than the other. I love all of them. And it's really hard being away from three of them. But yeah, I still want them. We're gonna do all we can to make sure our plans Go ahead and we finish these adoptions. Okay, last one. Emily and Adam won't want to leave Uganda without everyone. Absolutely yes, do not want to leave. We've got, I don't even want to talk about it. I keep getting teary every day. We've got, what, oh, it's, what day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday. We leave next week, very early Sunday morning. So a week and a half, I don't even want to talk about it because in Uganda time, that's like a minute, isn't it? It's gonna go so fast. This whole trip has gone so fast. It's really hard because I'm really torn because I would ideally like to stay longer, but Adam is settled in the UK. He's now missing school, it's not fair for him. You know, and football and all these things that he goes to. I also need to get back to make sure I'm earning money, but I don't want to go. I don't want to leave them. I don't want to go. You don't want you to go? I actually think it's going to be really hard on Tally this time. Mm -hmm. She is, she won't leave me alone. Or she? <laughs> oh. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope those answered some of your assumptions and your questions. Um, yeah, it helped you get to know us a little bit better. But we will see you again next time. If you don't already subscribe, please make sure you do. Um, yeah, we'll see you again next time. Bye, guys.